Hey, hey, all you mentees, this is the Uncanny Omar from Nearman Condition, and join me today as I do an overview of the sensational She-Hulk by John Byrne Omnibus from Marvel Comics. So, please stay tuned. Okay, now today was the day I was going to do my haul for the month of May, but this book came in and I thought to myself, well, no, let's go ahead and do an overview of this omnibus because I know a lot of you all have been asking me for it. And it was during the pandemic that, you know, Marvel and uh, the Hashtag um, group stopped sending advanced copies, so I couldn't get one. So I ended up getting the direct market cover. There's also a standard edition, but I like this one because it's, a, it's issue one of She-Hulk. And honestly, I really thought that this was going to be the standard edition and then the poster was going to be the direct market cover. So let's take a closer look at the back here. These are all the covers that are collected in here. Uh, the retail price is $125. The other cool thing about the direct market and the standard edition cover is that they both have different pictures here on the spine. I thought that was pretty cool. It's the first time Marvel's done that. And let's go ahead and talk about the spine because I'm sure most of you have noticed by now or you've seen pictures on Twitter or Instagram when people got their books is that this book also has a flat spine just like the case of The Amazing Spider-Man by J. Michael Straczynski volume 2 and what I mean by flat spine is that there's no curve on the spine it's flat it's one of the I guess it's the fourth book because we had Black Widow, the Wolverine reprint, and then JMS Volume 2. It's printed in Malaysia, and they were using that temporarily. So this is what a normal Marvel omnibus looks like. This is what they normally look like. They have a curved spine, and that makes it easier for reading, right? That's how it creates an eye like that. And I know some people have issues with it. I didn't really notice that big of a difference when I was going through the Wolverine omnibus, but that's just my opinion. But I did want to point that out, that it does have a flat spot. We'll look at the build of the book here a little bit later. Let's look underneath the dust jacket. So here we have the image of the standard edition. This is something really cool that Marvel started to do, is that they started printing the covers on underneath the dust jacket. So you get both of them, right? But it's underneath the dust jacket. Here's what the spine looks like. And yeah, this is the poster that they decided to use. Now, the funny story about this cover is that they were going to use one with modern colors on it, but the covers that Marvel sent us got circulated around the internet. Here, I'll talk about that while I flip through the book. They got circulated around the internet, and John Byrne found out about it, and he was pretty upset, apparently, and got a hold of people. So they changed it back to the cover to issue one. By the way, I love this tone of green on the bookend pages here so here we have all the people that made this book possible mark beasley caitlin o'connell kettery woody um jeff york jennifer grunwald so all these people that made this omnibus happen and of course john byrne and michael yuri up there john byrne and todd Britton. and there is your table of contents and it all kicks off with marvel graphic novel number 18 now i know she appeared in 16 and 17 as well the graphic novels these were the big magazine sized books but those weren't done by john byrne they actually kick it off with john byrne's run so here's wyatt character from the fantastic four that is now she hulk's love interest this is during the time of the she hulk after secret wars where she joined the fantastic four and i'm gonna give just a little bit of spoiler to set up the series but by the end of this graphic novel, she is no longer able to turn into Jennifer Walters here, like she normally does. Much like the Hulk, Bruce Banner turns into the Hulk, Jennifer Walters, the lawyer, turns into She-Hulk. So after this graphic novel, when she's in her on ongoing series, which we'll go ahead and flip through, she is no longer able to change back. So here's Marvel Comics Presents number 18 also collecting that so this collects yeah the graphic novel number 18 sensational she hulk one through eight and then there's a big gap 31 through 46 when john byrne came back 48 through 50 and then of course this marvel comics presents number 18 and just the she hulk material so it all starts with this issue right here this is your second chance to buy my book i'm gonna come to your house and rip up all your x-men if you don't so what she means by that is this is the second She-Hulk series. There was an original series where she first appeared, the Savage She-Hulk. Uh, she was created by Stan Lee, 
and John uh, Bus Busima. So this is your second chance to get it. And it lasted a while. I mean, 60 issues back then for a Marvel heroine, it was in unheard of. So what makes this series stand out? What makes this fun? Other than the fact that you've probably heard John Byrne's name, you've seen his take on X-Men, you've seen his take on Fantastic Four, uh, and you know that he can write because he was writing Fantastic Four, he was writing Alpha Flight, and he was writing this. So what made this unique is that for the first time, a Marvel character was aware that she was a comic book. And so this is long before Deadpool, long before Harley Quinn. She breaks the fourth wall, not only on the covers, but inside the issues, too. Like, sometimes she is talking to John Byrne, talking about how she's going to go after John Byrne for making her fight lame villains. And what's interesting, like, the first few issues kind of remind me of the Fantastic Four, the way that they were laid out. Uh, you have the first issue introducing the character, the second issue introducing uh, aliens... The third issue is the spot or the guest star of another hero to boost sales. And I think the fourth issue is the golden age here. Yeah, kind of like when Namor first appeared in the pages of Fantastic or reappeared rather in the pages of Fantastic Four number four. I always thought that was a pretty cool little, I don't know if it was on purpose, throwback to the FF. So here's John Byrne's style. Most of these earlier issues are inked by Bob Wysick. And Glennis Oliver is the colorist. So it's got a cleaner look to what John Byrne's own inks look like. It's not as clean as when Terry Austin was inking his stuff. But it's not as sketchy as when John Byrne's inks his own stuff. So this is issue 8. This is where he ends up taking a break. He leaves the book until issue 31. And what's interesting is that when people talk about books like this that are collected they, they want everything right like I, such is the case as myself i would love to have everything but i will say this is a rare case where it actually makes sense because from issues 9 through 30 there were different writers like you had simon Furman, peter david come in and write the character of uh, she hulk i think um it's where i first saw what, uh, brian hitch's artwork who kind of mimicked john burns well John Byrne did not acknowledge any of the things that happened in between issues uh, 8 and 31. He just kind of kept writing the story that he was telling in the first eight issues in a very John Byrne fashion. So if it makes you feel better, you don't need any of the issues in between. I'm sure there will be complete collections later on um, to, you know, for the completists such as myself, because I will be getting them. But yeah, as far as you, John Byrne and She-Hulk are concerned, you don't really need them because he didn't acknowledge them. And so you're not going to be lost. Um, oh, yeah, this is the Demi, yeah, the Demi Moore uh, controversial. Demi Moore was um, nude and pregnant when she took a Vanity Fair cover. And that's what John Byrne. There are a lot of things in this that kind of push the authority, the comics authority code. I think there was an issue 40 where she's jumping around. One of my favorite panels, of course, m most uh, prepubescent boys back in the oh this is classic john Byrne stuff like when he did the snowblind issue in alpha flight where they're going through a blizzard but like i said she acknowledges the fact that she is in a comic book and it's pretty interesting because you know eventually dan slot did that same thing in the issues of she hulk but he did it a little bit different yeah there's an issue in issue 40 i think let's let's see if it's in here that kind of pushed the yeah this one the comics code right here and it's of course this and any kid my age was just in awe we were like oh my gosh she hulk is super hot how did he do that how was he able to do this without without getting banned but yeah i think he was just pushing the envelope so this series ended up lasting 60 issues he only made it to issue 50 who he co-wrote and i want to say the latest the last issues are kind of a take on x-force they were mimicking x-force Actually, let's look at the extras, because I've gone on way too long about She-Hulk. We'll look at the build of the book after we look at extras. And here's the John Byrne interview from Marvel Age. Fred Hembeck stuff. More Marvel Age covers by John Byrne. Moment of the year. And more stuff from the Handbook of the Marvel Universe. There's the trade paperbacks. Yeah, this is what I was talking about. So, Sensational She-Hulk 43 is parodied after x-force 3 and i'm glad they kept it in here 
So the panel layouts are the same. And even the art style is very similar. That was pretty cool that they kept that in here. And again, the poster. The original uh, colors of the poster are in here too, but it's on the opposite page of an issue, and I don't want to give that away. Now, let's talk about this binding and paper quality. So, like I said, a flat spine, very little curve. I mean, that could probably be fixed a little bit with the ruler trick where you stick a thin ruler. I don't really recommend it or I don't ever do videos on it. I've done it in a few of my books because it could also damage your spine and I would hate for anybody to do that. So as you can tell there is a little bit of an eye, not very much because not like Wolverine that I've shown you all or even the JMS Spider-Man. This one has a flatter inner eye. Now what does that mean? It means you're gonna get a little bit of a gutter loss. As you can tell in this page here without holding it down uh, the book does stay open though so that's pretty good I mean that the actual board doesn't lay down until you get further in there but it does stay open and does its job it is 752 pages as far as the paper quality it's your actually it feels a little thicker than most of the recent Marvel Omnis I don't know why it is it might be just me I haven't done one of these overviews in a while but it feel it does feel a little thicker could be my Sensors fooling me though. But I just wanted to show a little bit of here. Let's look at the back here and see where how it holds up. So again, much like the very front of the book, when you get into the last few pages back here, um, it doesn't keep shut. It doesn't want to keep closing on you or anything, but you may have to push down. Actually, no. Yeah, it's staying shut. Say after a couple of reads, this will be fine. Uh, to me, you know, like I mentioned, those. Those flat spines don't really bother me, but I did want to mention it because I know it bothers some people. Now, I think I made it pretty clear on my shows, my live streams, how low of a print run this has had. So if you are interested in it, try to pick it up sometime soon because I hate for this book to go out of print. The direct market cover is already really hard to find, um, but I know that the, the regular uh, cover is still out there. Now, you can still find the book at our sponsor. CheapGraphicNovels.com, your online home for brand new graphic novels and collected editions up to 50% off the cover price. Cheap Graphic Novels prides itself on packaging your books so they arrive safely and in excellent condition, as well as prompt and helpful service. And check out their bargain bin for even greater deals up to 90% off cover price. And for you minties, Cheap Graphic Novels is renting a special promotion. If you're a first time customer, let them know you were referred by Near Mint Condition at the checkout and you'll receive a credit for free shipping on your next order. Now this is only for US customers. Cheap Graphic Novels, your source for the hottest books with the kind of deep discounts, quality shipping, and customer service that will keep you coming back for more. Now that was the contents of the book, the build of the book, and the page count. Let me know in those comments down below if you're picking this up. If you've never read it, if you have the trade paperbacks, if you've always been curious about She-Hulk, or if you're going to pass up on it and get the Dan Slot run. I would love to know all those comments down below. And if you did get it, which cover did you end up getting? Again, this was the Uncanny Omar. Please don't forget to hit that like, subscribe button if you haven't subscribed yet. We put out videos every day. Don't forget to ring that bell for notifications to let you know when our videos are going live. And more importantly, please everybody stay healthy, stay safe out there, and much love to you all.